Okay, I think we might be live. I think we're live, yes. Um, so hello to all of you out there. Um, welcome to you, wherever you're social distancing, to our online drop-in session on virtual assessment centres, which we've entitled, What are virtual assessment centres and how can you best prepare for them? Um, this session is brought to you by Target Jobs and our sister site next door, Grad Island. Um, I'm Matt. I'm one of the Target Jobs editors. Um, I'm just here today to help our panel and moderate the discussion a little bit. Um, and try to make sure that we get as many questions as possible answered. Um, if you look in the little pane that might be on the your screen that says questions, um, if you see something that you really want answered, please upvote it, uh, just like you would on Reddit or anything like that. Click the little arrow, and the more votes it gets, it will get to the top of the pile, and we'll be able to answer it. Um, I just want to make clear that the advice we're about to provide is going to be very general advice. It's applicable to a lot of different situations. We're not going to be focusing on any specific companies or specific sectors, um, but we'll be providing insights that are useful no matter which field you're approaching. Um, I just One last thing is that you might occasionally get from me a little um, uh, sort of notification. I'll see if I can just send one now. Um, and I'm going to be dropping in little links and advice into um into the, the conversation as we go on um i'll try not to bombard you with things that are um too annoying give me a second so you can see an example of that now um so now that's all out of the way, um, I'd just like to introduce our panel. We have Lauren Davis, who's a resourcing partner at Group GTI. Uh, Lauren, if you could say hello so that we know Hi. who you are. Hello. There we go. Lauren is an experienced recruitment partner in the GTI team. She's worked alongside a range of employers in various industries, including banking, fast moving consumer goods, construction and technology. She's been facilitating assessment centers for quite some time. And since coronavirus has turned her expertise to virtual assessment centers, um, in the other box, we have Charlotte Heck, who's the resourcing hello. coordinator at Group GTI. Say hello, Charlotte. Hiya. There we go. <laughs> Charlotte is a recruitment coordinator who joined the Group GTI team as a recent graduate and is usually the first point of contact for students that need support with the recruitment process across various graduate, graduate programs, internships and apprenticeships, and she usually briefs people ahead of assessment centers. So I think to start with, Charlotte and Lauren are just going to explain what virtual assessment centers are and just to give some general tips. So I'm going to hand it over to our panel. Thanks so much, Matt. Um, yes, as Matt said, the information that we're going to be providing is mainly generic. Um, it's really hard for us to pick up on specifics of different organisations um, as well as industry. So what we want to do is provide you with as much information as possible so that you feel comfortable and confident should you be invited to a virtual assessment centre over the next few uh, weeks or months or, or even into the future. So firstly, I think it's really important that we think about what is an assessment centre. Some people may have attended them in the past, others may never have experience these. Assessment centres are designed to be the final recruitment tool used during the uh, process while looking for uh, placement year students, um, internships and graduate programmes as well as apprenticeships. As many of you will know, if you've been going through the process, you would have done a number of different areas and a number of different activities. These can include things like um, uh, things can include things like telephone interviews, testing, um, things like uh, different uh, gamification uh, and case studies. Um, so once you've moved your way through the process and, and, and ended up in the final uh, final stages, um, the assessment centre is what you'd be invited to. These normally take place in the company's um, sort of buildings across the country and it's a chance for you to come into the organisation to take part in a day's worth of activities so that they can assess your competencies and find out more about uh, you as a person. An assessment centre can, uh, can comply of, of many different aspects. Um, it can look at, um, normally include uh, an interview, uh, either a one-to-one, -one, a panel interview, uh, or a two-to-one interview. It would have uh, a group exercise, where you can look at your team building skills and things like that. It can consist of um, a uh, case study, uh, sort of an in-tray exercise, um, some sort of presentation. There's lots and lots of different things that you can find. And what they will be is specific to what that organisation needs. So I suppose what we need to look at now is how is coronavirus going to affect this? And it is going to have a huge, huge impact on how we're going to use assessment centres. This time of year is really, really rife for assessment centres. Organisations are normally at the end of their, what we call milk round. Uh, we're normally at the end now of, of what we would be looking for when it comes to uh, finding our graduates. And this is when our assessment centres start to take place. 
obviously we all know that we are on lockdown we can't get out we can't move to uh, offices we can't move um, to organizations and across the country um, and we don't know how long this is going to go on for so what organizations want to do is to continue that recruitment process they want to continue because they're keen on making sure that they are still developing new talent and getting that into the organization because the bottom line is that business doesn't stop it's going to continue and things will still carry on flourishing graduates and apprentices placement students summer internships are all vital vital parts of business so we want to continue making this happen Organisations have been working tirelessly over the last few months to make sure that they can continue this. And the way in which this has been um, solved is by having virtual assessment centres. Much the same as uh, a normal assessment centre in that you will have lots of different aspects that will uh, test your um, capabilities and, and skills that the organisation are looking for. However, we remove that face-to-face -face contact and put this online. A virtual assessment centre can look different in a multitude of different ways. Um, each organisation is going to be different, and I know this is a point that we're highlighting a lot, but some of the similarities that we'll see throughout is, um, A, it being online, uh, obviously, this is what a virtual assessment centre uh, mainly is. Um, there could be a range of different software. We could be using Skype, Teams, BlueJeans, uh, Zoom, a range of different uh, pieces of, of tech, so that you can have your interview, your presentation, your group exercise, all online. Um, I think there's a lot of questions that are brought up around this and a lot of anxiety that comes from this, um, mainly around sometimes technology, sometimes um, will my skills still be able to be um, valued and things like that and hopefully this should bring a little bit more um, sort of clarification around that. We are looking to assess those um, capabilities but just looking at how we can do those in different ways. So if for example a group exercise is removed from a virtual assessment centre, those um, competencies will be assessed in a different area. So for example, a recent uh, virtual assessment centre that I ran uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had to remove our group exercise due to it being a practical exercise. However, we took the, uh, the competencies that we were looking for in that and moved that to our interview, add in an extra interview question and we were able to see that, um, that skill there. So I think it's really important that we, we think about our top tips and we think about um, what we need to do in order to be successful at, at these virtual assessment centres. My recommendation is A, always ask your organisation and your, um, the company that you've applied to what the specifics will look like. Some organisations will um, use sort of holding platforms and things like that so you can join um, as a huge organisation um, and, and join that um, so you can go off to interviews in different areas. Some may send calendar invites and use outlets. Make sure you're aware of the technology that's being used so that you can utilise that. My first top tip um, is that you still need to treat this as your first, uh, as your final stage. Um, it's really important that you still see this as, as the last stage in the process. And with that, give it the same level of respect, I suppose, that you would if you were doing a face-to-face -face interview. So think about how you dress for the part. Think about, is, are you uh, dressed appropriately? Are you conducting yourself appropriately? Many of us over the last few weeks and months may have uh, you know, let things slip, <laughs> brushing your hair or things like that. Make sure that we are appropriate. This is the final stage, just like you would get dressed for your final interview. Do the same with this. It's really, really important that you're showing the best side of you that you can do. Make sure your background is appropriate. Um, you want to make sure that um, you are showing a level of professionalism. Um, now, we appreciate and we understand that things are really tricky. You're going to be in situations, in locations where um, you are... Uh, you know, put into to rooms and stuff like that that you would never normally uh, sort of show your colleagues. Um, and that's fine. We, we, we have a level of understanding there and it's not a problem. But what you might want to do is just have a look around, just make sure that there's nothing there that, that could uh, sort of jeopardise, make sure there's nothing like your, your washing drying or an old poster or anything like that. Just make sure you're looking as professional as possible. It also takes away any um, sort of areas where the assessor might be looking that they're not focusing on you so you want to make sure that you are the the main focus make sure everybody knows that you are conducting an interview um, some of you may have seen the video circulating on LinkedIn and, and, and things like that of the uh, the famous lady who's doing her video interview and her husband walks in um, not in the best of, uh, of situations and you want to make sure that everybody around you is aware that you're taking part in this so that that can be mitigated let them know that you're going to be conducting an interview so that you don't have you know mum jumping in there bursting in through your bedroom door or anything like that these tiny little things are things that we take for granted it may seem silly and it may seem like these tips are 
uh, as somewhat like teaching you to suck eggs but but really this is us reminding because in this situation it can be really really tricky and, and and trying to remember all of those things can be really hard so my first tip as i said this is still your final stage treat it like you would if you're going to an assessment center my second top tip um is you can only control what you can control many many people that i have spoken to um from a candidate base uh, have been really really nervous about technology um as much as we want to as a business um, and, and businesses that will be supporting you with your virtual assessments we want to mitigate uh, any nerves, any anxiety that you might have, it's really, really important that um, you understand that you can only control what you can. Um, if your internet breaks down, if your um, uh, connectivity fails, if you're a bit jumpy, if your camera doesn't work, these are things that you cannot control. These are things beyond your means. And that's okay. People have a level of understanding. Is that that saying that go around is going around at the moment of we're all in this together? And that is so true in this situation. We are all in this together. Assessors' internet might break down, your internet might break down, and that's fine. It's not a problem. But it's how you come back from this. Make sure that you stay calm, you stay collected, and you're still able to conduct the interview once things are resumed. Don't let this piece of um sort of hold up affect you so much that then that has an effect on the rest of your um your interview or your presentation or you know your case study or, or whatever it may be my third top tip um is you still need to get the most out of this and i think this is possibly the most important uh, tip that i can give you you still need to get as much out of this uh, process as you would if you were going into the organization and I think this is really really important because an assessment center not only gives an opportunity for businesses to see how you perform but it's also an opportunity for you to see how businesses perform so what's really important is that you are active in finding out this information go out into social media find out what organizations are up to people that have great um, responsibility activities people that are involved in charitable activities people that are involved in uh, making sure that the welfare of their staff is still really uh, is really high on the agenda is all great things and what you want to do is make sure that you are your values are added to and matched to uh, the company's values so what I would suggest is use social media, use LinkedIn, use Facebook, use Instagram, use Twitter, all these different resources to get as much information about the organisation as you can. We're not talking about their turnover. We're not talking about, uh, you know, their place in the stock market, or where they sit in the lawyer, lawyer top 10. What we want to know is, is this an organisation where you can feel comfortable? And what I think you need to look at is not only all those facts that they're putting out there, but reach out to, to current grads, reach out to your alumni at your university, speak to your careers advisors who will be able to put you in touch with these people who may be working at the same organisation to give you a breakdown of what this can look like. As well as that, think about the process as a whole. How has your process been? How have you felt throughout the whole of this? And this will be a great indicator as to if this is an organisation that you feel that you match with. If the communication has been great, you've been kept up to date, you know where your application stands, you feel supported, and that's a really good reflector on what the company will look like later on down the line. It's about inferring and taking this information and, and making a whole judgment as best as possible. And organisations want to support you. I think it's really important and very easy at this stage to feel like you're, you're battling, but it's not. Organisations want to support you as best they can. So ask for the information, ask for the help, uh, reach out to people um, that, that you'd be supported by um, and allow them to help you through this process. These are top tips, I suppose, for video interviewing. Um, it's just as important to, uh, to practice and, and to prepare uh, with a normal assessment centre. Um, and Charlotte's gonna give us some tips on, on how to prepare for, for our assessment centre from a generic point of view. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, just one second. Right. I, just, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who are asking questions in the column on the right. Um, please do hang on. We will address them after after a little bit a little bit of time, so towards the end of the session. But please do keep them coming and keep up voting them as well. Thank you. Sorry, Charlotte, off you go. <laughs> That's all right. Perfect, thank you. Um, so as Lauren just said, um, I'll be talking through just a few general kind of top tips about um, some of 
just some of the kind of aspects that you might face when it comes to um, a general assessment centre. Um, this isn't going to cover all of the types of activities that you might be faced um, and so you might have to kind of go away and have a look um, at some more kind of targeted advice for the specific activities you'll be doing. Um, but starting off in terms of kind of an interview, um, with an interview you might be kind of on a one-to-one -one interview, you could be on a panel interview um, and this could be made up of people from the HR team or it most likely will be with a kind of senior manager, potentially your future line manager as well. Um, and with interviews um, these will most likely be coming in the form of kind of motivational questions um, thinking about why it is that you really want this particular role at this particular company um, but there's also the side where you'll have competency-based questions um, and those are the types of questions where you'll be asked well can you tell me a little bit about a time where you have been a group been in group work and you've had to leave that group or something along those lines tell me about a time where you've showed good communication and with the questions um, it's really important to kind of get across both what it is that happened but also what your specific contribution was to that um, so for our kind of top tip it would be to follow um, a bit of like a star approach now some of you might know what this is um, if not that's fine I'll we'll, we'll explain it to you um, so the star approach is um, a little bit of a method just to help you to kind of get things out in a bit of a logical way. Um, so it would be to talk about the situation that you were in and the task that you were faced with. And then after that, it's moving on to talk about the actions that you took and what was the result from that. Um, and following that type of format really helps to kind of follow in a logical order and make sure that you've got everything covered. Um, now, one thing that is really important to remember is to make sure that you do cover all of those four um, points, because sometimes people do get a little bit stuck and just end up talking about what the situation was and what the group did as a whole, um, which is great. But we're really, really interested in knowing what your specific and individual actions were um, and kind of what it is that you learned from them. When you're talking about the result, it doesn't necessarily have to be a positive result. Maybe everything didn't go as planned, um, but what is it that you learn from that? What can you reflect on and then kind of use for, for future similar situations as well? Um, so that's just a bit of advice for the interview. Um, if you're faced with a presentation, um, you'd be given a brief ahead of time um, as to whether it will be something about yourself, maybe a hobby or an interest, or perhaps it'll be something a bit more technical where you have to present a business problem um, and what your solution would be to that. Um, and depending on what the kind of brief is, it will give you a rough idea on how long the presentation should be. Um, if not, then the recruiter and the employer will let you know if it should be kind of 15, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever kind of timing there. Um, but our really key kind of tip for this one is to practice. And I know that probably sounds quite simple, um, but it's really important that you not only know the content that's on your slide, but you've practiced it out loud because when it comes to it, you don't want to get to the end of your time and you've still got 10 minutes worth of presentation to present. Um, so it's really important that you time yourself, um, you know how long the presentation is going to take you, um, whether you are speaking too quickly or too slowly so that you know how to kind of moderate your own pace and that kind of thing. Um, you might also find it useful to kind of practice with friends or family, it could be somebody that you're in lockdown with or even doing it kind of over Zoom or FaceTime or anything like that, um, just to kind of get a bit of a practice for kind of doing it in a video format for, for the virtual assessment centre as well. Um, but really, really, that does highlight um, how much practice you need and it will help you to build up some confidence as well and really kind of believe in, in what you're saying within that presentation. Um, so the very final um, kind of activity that I'll be talking about is a group exercise. Um, and within the group exercise, the key kind of thing that recruiters and employers are looking for is how you're working collaboratively with other people. So um, I know that it's quite a common misconception that some people have that you go into a group exercise and um, you really need to show kind of how good of a leader you are and that you can lead the group towards kind of the, the goal that you were reaching. Now, the problem with this is sometimes you'll have a group exercise that's made up of kind of four, five, six people. And if you've got six people that are all trying to be a leader, 
it could turn into a bit of a shouting match and you're kind of deviating from the point that you would want to initially kind of achieve. Um, so it's really, really important to kind of stay focused and stay collaborative, kind of contributing your ideas, but not being too dominating and um, making sure that other people are contributing as well. Um, and it's also not to say that you have to agree with everything that everybody's saying. You could you could disagree um, or you could say, um, well, that's a really good idea. But have you thought about it in this other kind of way? Or that's great. But Lauren, what do you think about this, for example? So it really is kind of trying to strike that balance of not being too dominating, but making sure that your voice is heard um, just because it's important that everybody can be heard rather than just trying to kind of rise through the ranks and be in that top dog in that um, exercise as well. Um, so that's just a very, very brief kind of um, few tips there um, across three of those examples. Like I said at the start, there will be other types of um, activities that you'll be faced with. And that is dependent on the assessment centre that employers put together. Um, but yeah, that's just, just a bit of a general tip there. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you both for, for sharing some of those tips. Um, I think, uh, are we happy to move on to questions? Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So we've got the first one, and I think this is actually a little bit of a two-part question. So we've got what kind of questions might we be asked in the interview to showcase skills that may have been tested in a group activity? And I think there's a bit of a caveat there. There's a sort of an, an implication that there won't be a group activity if it's a virtual mm. assessment center. Mm. So I think it's what happens if it's just an interview, and then how about group activities online? Absolutely. I'm more than happy to, to ask this one. In the assessment centre that we planned uh, over the last couple of weeks with one of our, um, our organisations, um, we actually had to do this. We had to cancel our uh, group exercise because it wasn't possible because it was a practical activity. Um, so what we had to do was look at where this was being assessed. Now, throughout our process, we had a telephone interview available as well. Um, so that competency of working together and that's what we're looking at we look at different competencies so the competency of working together was assessed at the telephone interview with a question and also at the group exercise now it was possible that because we've assessed it once already that you're just assessing it for a second time just to make sure that that's still there and it wasn't a bit of a fluke um, the sorts of questions that you'll be asked could be one of two the first one could be um, a question, uh, like a scenario based question. So this will be a question that you'll be asked where um, they will make a scenario up. Um, it could be that you are working on a site. It could be that you're working to a tight deadline. It could be that there's a project needs to be done. Something that's going to need that, that, that skill that they're looking to assess. So for example, group work, you could be asked, uh, you could be put into a scenario where um, you're asked, for example, um, imagine for me that you're in a team that has been um, given a project to do over the next four weeks. Um, the team has um, diminished by one person, that person's gone off sick. How as a team are you going to make sure that you can pick up their work and continue? And we need to look for those skills and then we'll be looking for the indicators to show that you're you possess the same skills that we're looking for. The other type of question that you might be asked um, it could be a, a, a generic competency-based question. We'll be asked for an example of where you can demonstrate this so it depends when that's been assessed before in the past throughout the process um, and if you are asked a competency question like Charlotte said the best way to do that is to, to use that star method set the scene talk about the task talk about your actions and then talk about the result at the end so those are the two types of questions that you could be asked and I know that there is probably some information more about scenario based questions versus uh, sort of generic competency questions available um, I think it was a target job so I know that there's been a few few bits around there for different types of interview questions Sorry, just to kind of um, mm. clear up the, the last, well, the second part of the question about kind of group exercises, if they are to go ahead, um, some companies I know that do kind of a group exercise where everybody's given a bit of a written brief to read through and then it's more of like a discussion based activity. Now, those types of group exercises are easier to replicate uh, on an online setting because it would just mean pre-sending out kind of the, the material that you had to read through so that you know the exercise you're talking about and then it's just about getting everybody into the same kind of video space like we're in now to be able to have that discussion um, so for those types of group exercises they're the ones that are likely to still be going ahead it's like Lauren said where there's kind of a physical kind of activity that you need to do if you need to build something obviously that's naturally going to be a lot harder doing it from home um, so it really does depend on the nature of the activity that the employers would use normally um, but that's just to let you know that obviously not all group exercises will just be cancelled outright it does just depend on 
what what the kind of nature of that exercise would be. Thank you both, and I I am sending links around while you're while you're both talking. So you mentioned the, the competency based <laughs> interview right. questions. That's just and I, I apologise if it's distracting you while you're speaking. Um, but they are useful. <laughs> To, to everyone in the chat, I'll, I'll try to make sure that when we send up a follow-up email, we, we try to get a list of links out to you as well of anything that we've we've talked about today. Um, so if we move on to the yeah. next question, I'm I'm going to delete questions as we go through them. Um, you know, shout if if you feel that you you need more information, put another question in, and we'll try to get it to the top as well. Um, Okay, so the next question, are assessment centers likely to be live or contain pre-recorded questions and activities? Ooh, good question. That one? Good question, because the first thing you'll probably think of when you hear of a video interview is the pre-recorded type that you normally find throughout the process that you might have already experienced. Um, most, and again, this is generic information, but most, and our recommendation would always be to make sure that it is um, a live interview. So that would mean that there are two assessors or one assessor um, and you on a live call. So the time will be set and that interview will be happening um, at a live pace. However, throughout the whole of the virtual assessment centre, there may be pre-recorded activities. Like Charlotte said, we may be sending out activities that have been um, pre-recorded information via video link for case studies, uh, intro exercises, um, some group exercise information um, that could be pre-recorded. Um, so it could be a mix throughout the whole day, but for the actual interview, I would recommend and probably suggest that it would be a live, a live interview. But always good to double check with the organisation. Mm -hmm. Make sure to reach out before you you go to virtual assessment center. Um, yeah. yeah. So there's one, and this is actually quite an interesting one. Um, and I I might even start us off on this because I think I've had this from colleagues as well. Um, do you think there will be any leniency for backgrounds? For example, my family only has one table, which is used by my parents and sister as they're working from home with set shifts, which means the only other room requires me to sit on a bed when I work. Now, I, 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 my advice, speaking as target jobs, because we do a lot of advice on video interviews, is try to keep your background as neutral as possible. Um, there isn't a problem with sitting on a bed, I feel, if, if, as long as it's not particularly distracting. I had this on a call with colleagues the other day. I was working in a different room that I normally work to. Um, in the background were some figurines I've collected from my travels. And the only thing that drew their attention were the figurines. They didn't hear a word I was saying. So always keep your background <laughs> as neutral as possible. Um, but I'll pass it over to Lauren and Charlotte. What do you think about uh, <laughs> I, working? I have a bit of a confession. <laughs> I'm actually sat on a bed right now. <laughs> so who would have known? Um, yeah, exactly the same as Matt said. My other half at the moment, he's on a call um, on for his work. Um, his computers are set up on our, our dining room table. Um, so we came to the, the office slash spare room slash laundry room, you know, whatever it is. And you have to make it work. So yes, there is absolutely an essence of being a lead leniency at this um, time. Um, what I think we want to highlight is what you have control of, try and make sure that you are um, making, as we said, a, a, as plain a background as possible. So um, if, for example, you're in your bedroom and you're on your bed, but behind you is a pile of clean washing or dirty washing or something like that, that's something that can be changed. Um, but yeah, absolutely, I, I wouldn't panic. And if it is something that you are worried about, again, reach out to the team, let them know, ask them, speak to them and give them a heads up and say, look, I'm, I'm working, you know, there's five of us in our house and this is the situation at the moment. We businesses are not going to be uh, ogres in this situation we, we want to help you just as much as as, as you need the help um, so yeah absolutely if you, if you really feel conscious about it reach out to the, the team and just let them know and, and get reassurance from them um, but my my personal recommendation is that that's absolutely fine as long as it looks professional around you which hopefully this does <laughs> thank you um, so our next question and this is one that i think it strays a little bit into our realm of we don't want to give too specific advice um but takura says hi guys um i know you mentioned that companies are recruiting uh during the the current pandemic um but from what i've seen most are suspending the recruitment process or not responding within time scales could you elaborate more on who is actually recruiting um and i think this probably plays a little bit more into the logistics of things i mean we're all mm. finding our feet here but I'll, lauren yeah. charlotte what do you think yeah, it, this is a really tricky one because 
most organizations do want to continue with their recruitment um, mm -hmm. and no organization would um, gladly elect out of it so if an organization is sometimes taking a little bit longer to get back to you than what you first anticipated this may be because there are teething issues with, with getting the team set up at home you know there's we, we're now sort of in week three slash four of, of working from home we'd like to think that people are now in a position where they are um, able to uh, sort of mm. respond and, and know what's happening but it may be that there are looking for answers I know you've probably heard this a million times and it's driving me mad, but we are in unprecedented times. People, uh, businesses need support. Businesses need to know that they're, they're ready to, to hire. So um, I'm going to harp on about it, but, but if, you, if you want an update, reach out to the team, um, ask for the update, ask if it's still going ahead. And as soon as they have that information, they will pass it on to you. That's my, one thing that I tell all of my, my candidates. We don't withhold information just for fun. It's not a power trip. Um, we want to get that information over to you as soon as possible. So um, I think for live jobs and, and, and live advertisements, having a look on target jobs obviously is fantastic. There'll be live updated information there of people that are currently recruiting at the moment. Um, obviously your normal channels of, of, of advertising, things like that, have a look um, at where you normally look for your jobs um, and, and have a look maybe on their websites for updates. They may be giving you a time frame on, on when to expect to hear back from different things. Uh, there may be notices on the website to say we are running a two to three day delay on, on normal um, expectations for reply. Mm -hmm. And I think, sorry, just to kind of jump onto mm. the back of your um, answer there, Lauren, um, I really think it's also important to think about what type of opportunity it is that you've applied mm. for. So, for example, with summer internships, obviously, we've got the added kind of pressure of those start dates would be considerably earlier than what a graduate programme would be. So, obviously, there's lots of kind of different things that, that employers and recruiters are having to juggle of not only trying to kind of think about how to continue with their with their recruitment um, but of course kind of when the start date of that program can be and I think that possibly answers one of the questions that's just popped up um, in, in the questions tab as well um, obviously we can't speak for all employers as, as we've been kind of saying um, and I know that for the most part I would imagine that people are trying to kind of fit to the current kind of time scales that they initially have um, I have heard of some companies who have pushed back some dates um i think is um of 2021 for example i have heard of a few companies choosing to do that just because at the moment we don't necessarily have all of the information to be able to say yes we can definitely start in september um so that's also something to take into consideration obviously if it's a summer internship program um i completely understand that you are going to want some answers a little bit sooner because we're getting close to the times that you would be starting that program um so yeah as lauren said absolutely go in and have a chat with um the recruiters send them an email give them a call um and just see if they have any of that information that they can share with you because if they do they, they certainly will uh, this this is something uh, I sent around a link when we were doing a test at the very beginning, a link to one of our coronavirus um, job hunting advice articles. And it's, it, you know, we, we are reaching out, we are asking people how the hiring processes and things are going, but it, you really do have to be patient. Um, mm. And I, I appreciate that. That is the worst feeling in the world when you're, you're hunting for a job to, to have that patience. But um, everybody's trying to adapt to this and a lot of a lot of it will not be within the the realm of the company making the decisions it's, it's down to the government it's down to the official advice um, and I think uh, you know for anybody who's worried about start dates delayed start dates delayed interviews things like that um, that's kind of the general advice at the moment is be patient reach out when you can um, I was talking to an, an employer in a certain sector and the, one of the main people who was responsible had um, a, a couple of days before lockdown around Europe, uh, taken their family on a holiday to Spain and were then trapped in Spain. Um, you know, they, they do want to answer those emails. They do want to answer those phone calls, but they're having a hard time getting connection or they're having a hard time getting in touch with the office or getting the right equipment, whatever it might be, you know, GDPR and all that. You can't just um, rock up in an airport Wi-Fi lounge and, and start firing off private information. Um, so, yeah, just be patient, be sympathetic, understand everybody's going through this at the moment, I think is the best advice. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question, does it make a difference whether you conduct the video call on your phone or laptop or is any device OK? Um, so if, 
you're okay for me to take that one, Lauren? Go for um, it, yeah, absolutely. I, I would say it wouldn't necessarily matter what kind of device it is that you're using, obviously, as long as it's one that works. If it's an interview that would require a camera, then obviously try to make that available. If you don't have a camera on any kind of device, then that obviously definitely is not the end of the world. If you don't have those kind of means and materials available, then there will be another way um, that that those kind of interviews can happen um, but in terms of the video interviews if you do it whether regardless of whether it's on a laptop a phone an ipad whatever device i think the main thing is making sure that it's set up in front of you so that you can be seen um, and it also that it's steady so that you're not kind of walking around carrying your phone everywhere and kind of having a bit of a tour of your house and that kind of thing i think just making sure that it is in one kind of set place it's steady we can see you you can see us um, and that kind of the, the basic functions are they're working as well um i don't yeah there's not going to be kind of any kind of penalty if you choose to use a phone rather than a laptop as long as it gets the job done then that's what that's what we're kind of most interested in that's brilliant thank you um so we've got someone asking for a virtual assessment center tutorial in the form of a video um, now, this is, I, I think, the closest we come to, <laughs> to a video <laughs> format advice on virtual assessment centers. Um, it, it's worth noting that there are many providers out there and it would be mm -hmm. very difficult to choose one and, and just to, to put it up there. Um, it's something we'll look into for target jobs. Uh, I, I think we can move on. We're, again, for all those of you upvoting um, questions about dates, uh, we, we really, you know, patience. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that we can't give you more information. We are trying to pull together resources at the moment. I'll include as many links in a follow-up email as I can. Um, so the next one I think that is is quite a good one to go into is, could you provide some more information about how in-tray exercises will be conducted over video interview and how to be successful? Yeah, this is, um, this is quite a specific one. And I'll be honest, many organisations that we work with now um, are changing in tray exercises to different options. As it's, it's quite a, a specific um, task for uh, finding skills. Um, so the way in which it would be uh, conducted can be very, very similar. Um, you normally find that in-tray exercises are done um, on laptops, on computers. Um, so these can these can continue in the same the same manner. Um, it may just be that when working on something like Teams, for example, um, when you have your assessor there um, overseeing the work that you're doing, you're able to share your screens. So you can show what you're you're currently working on, um, and then assessors can can share their screen to, to share information that may be happening. So say, for example, you're in the middle of your in-tray exercise and uh, a new piece of information has become available or a change to an agenda or, you know, an email's popped up, they'd be able to share their screen. So it's really just changing whatever we would normally do um, virtually. So if someone was to hand you something, we're now just sharing our screens. We're just finding those technical ways of swapping out how we do these exercises. So, um, yeah, for in-tray exercises, I definitely think they are... Um, would be available for for doing on a virtual assessment center i don't think there's any reason why that wouldn't be a case um and i would again reach out have a chat see if they are going to continue with it they may not need to anymore because they feel they can get the skills from other exercises but yeah i think it'd be very similar um and and just double check the software that will be used so that you can familiarize yourself with it you know if it is microsoft teams have a look at it download it have a play with it make sure you're comfortable that you can use it to your capacity I think as well, just similarly, I, I mean, there was one instance a few weeks ago where um, one of our clients was going through an assessment centre kind of period. They didn't necessarily do in-tray exercise. It was more of like a case study analysis type exercise, um, but it worked in a similar way where unfortunately the person um, wasn't able to attend due to not being able to get a flight over to the UK. So instead, we just made it virtual for them. Um, and in terms of that kind of case study, it was emailed over to them at a certain time. They knew what time to expect that email in their inbox. Um, so they knew to check that and their junk inbox, just make sure that that exercise had been received. Um, they were then given a time time limit on how long they needed to do that exercise for. Um, there was a little bit of extra time added um, onto that by ourselves and by the company, um, just so that kind of any reading time could be kind of accounted for and any kind of technical issues could also be accounted for and then they also knew the like the time deadline to 
send that exercise back to the recruiter for as well. Um, so all of that information was communicated far in advance um, of how we were kind of setting that up and it ran so smoothly nothing went wrong because everybody knew where they had to be at what time um so it in terms of the logistics there is always a way that we can make this work um it obviously just depends on what the exercise is and how we're able to adapt that but yeah for the most part we're able to we're able to kind of replicate that on an online type of forum thanks very much charlotte um that, that's actually it, it's quite nice to hear that you can replicate everything online um i don't know if anyone saw yeah. there was that there was if, if anyone follows the curiosity rover on twitter um there's a great story about how the team of 20 people who work for nasa who all have to be in the same room are now operating it from home um and if they can do that then wow. your assessment center shouldn't be put off because it has to be <laughs> online we are really running out of time and this has gone so quickly um uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we did, I think we just we have to get through one question and there's one I can see that I think is just a great way to to cap it off. Um, mm -hmm. Can you expand on the best ways to prepare for an upcoming virtual assessment center? Would this preparation differ from a normal face to face assessment center? Um, I don't think it differs that much. I really don't. I think it's still about making sure that you know about the company. It's still making sure that you feel confident. It's about making sure that you feel prepared. So just the same that you would prepare for your um, face to face interview um, in researching the business, looking at your skills, uh, looking through your CV to see what transferable skills you have, all these types of things exactly the same um, the only thing that you need to start thinking about is instead of looking for your journey to the office look at the software that's going to be used instead of looking at um, you know what, what what do I need to prepare to bring with me what do I need to know about the technology that I'm about to have and um, all these types of things those are the little things that you need to really swap over thinking about like those top tips that we gave um, this is a little bit more sort of ball in your court with finding out about the organization finding out more about the business finding out more about if the values and ethos is the same as what you're looking for businesses as i've said are going to want to help you with this so feel free to reach out to them we're here as a source of information but they too will also be there to support you through this um, so in my personal opinion i think preparing exactly the same way um, by making sure that you feel prepared for an interview a group exercise and everything else um, and then just really fine tweaking and, and uh, toning those um those technology questions is probably mm. the the main thing that i would suggest charlotte i'm sure that you probably um, absolutely i absolutely agree i think the other thing to just highlight is when it comes to the technology you're not going to be left in the dark with mm. what's going on because for the most part it's not just you that's having to kind of get to grips with it there could be new technology that our recruiters are having to kind of get to grips with because it's something that they haven't used before um so where possible they may even kind of send you a how-to guide they might give you a call in advance of the day um just to kind of make sure that everything's working with you you know what you need to be doing um and even if they don't offer that to you you're more within your rights to give them a call and ask for that help um in advance because it's really important that you yourself feel comfortable comfortable and prepared um, so obviously if that help isn't offered to you then definitely don't feel afraid to, to kind of ask for that call just to go through check that your video camera is working check that your microphone's working and that kind of stuff because they will always be there to help um, yeah yeah that's probably the the kind of crux of that practice prepare and adapt that's good exactly <laughs> um, I think we have run out of time and I'm sorry because I can see that this has been really popular um, I just want to say thank you very much to Lauren and Charlotte for offering their insights. Um, thank you both for coming for coming online and giving up your time today. Um, say to everyone out there who's who's on the chat, if if you need more advice, um, you can check out targetjobs.co.uk or you can go to gradisland.com. Um, we also we will be sending out emails after this. I'll try to include links. There'll be a follow up, I think, with the recording of this session as well, um, along with with questions and links. Um, I think for the moment, all there is to say is stay safe, stay cool, and stay inside. Um, and we'll hopefully see you again in future, I think. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you. And thanks, thanks Matt, a lot for hosting. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Good luck to all of you out there job hunting. <laughs>